Hi guys, welcome to today's program. I am Mosley Collins, and I've got a great message for you that God has given me. So let's start by, with some prayer. Lord, I pray that you fe help me feed your sheep today and help them know that they're in safe hands. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, guys, it's a pretty scary time we're living in right now, so I got a good message for you. My message is called, Fear Not. Fear Not. And, uh, you know, there was a, a wonderful passage that Jesus spoke. It's Luke, 22, 30, Luke 12, verse 32. Jesus said, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's just think about that for a second. Jesus said, Fear not. Don't be afraid. Little flock. Isn't that touching that Jesus would refer to us as little flock? You know, the little flock of God that we belong to is precious in the sight of God. And he says, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's Know that God has become our Father. You know, some people know God as a far away entity or maybe a strict judge. But we know God as Father. Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure, His joy, His desire to give you, to give you the kingdom. We're not earning the kingdom. It's His great desire. It's God's great desire to give us the kingdom and everything we need in this time. In this world and in the world to come. You know, Jesus said uh, in John 16, 33, In the world you'll have tribulation, you'll have trouble, you'll have struggles. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So, God is calling us to, and Jesus is calling us to be of good cheer. Jesus is calling us to be happy. Jesus is calling us to be confident. Jesus is calling us to be courageous in this time. So how do you be courageous in a tough time? What you do when you're in a tough time is you speak the word of God over your life. When everything's going wrong, speak the word of God over your life. Amen. And it will work for your life. So there's no better word of God that I could bring you this morning than the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm is clearly the most famous passage in the Old Testament. It may be the most famous passage in the whole Bible. Believers and non-believers quote it. It's a wonderful psalm. So let's just take a look at it. I'm going to read it through once, and then I'm going to go back and break it down. So the 23rd Psalm is six verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful verse that is, a set of verses. So here's what I want you to do. I'm trying to give you something today that will help you. I'm prescribing something for you today. Dr. Collins is prescribing something that's going to help you. And what I want you to do is I want you to memorize the 23rd Psalm if you haven't already done it. Because when you wake up, as I sometimes do, at 3 in the morning, worried, you've got to be able to know it and got to be able to pray it without... You know, it's kind of hard to get out of your bed at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Turn all the lights on. Find the Bible. So let's memorize it. And then you, it'll be instantly available to you. You know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word of God. And the real translation of that scripture is faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. And you can hear the Word of God at 3 o'clock in the morning, lay in your bed if you have it memorized, and you pray it. So my prescription for you is that you memorize the 23rd Psalm and you pray it. When you're worried, when you're fearful, when you've, you've watched too much news on television. And you might also cut back on that too. <laughs> All right, let's talk. Uh, let's start at the beginning. It says, the Lord, David writes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now when I pray this, I make it first 
person between me and God. And the way I pray this is, Lord Jesus, because Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Lord Jesus, you are my shepherd. You're my shepherd king. You're my defender. You're my savior. You're my God. You're my protector. You're my healer. And because you're all those things, because you are my shepherd king, Lord Jesus, I shall not want. I shall not lack. I shall not fail. And usually I'll just tag on this verse I like from 3 John verse 2. You cause me to prosper and be in perfect health even as you prosper my soul. What a wonderful way to start that prayer. You can just feel, you know, this. most nights I don't get through the whole prayer before I'm back asleep. That's how comforting this is. Nothing will comfort you like this. You know, trying to think about what you've got to do tomorrow, that won't comfort you. Trying to figure out what we're going to do, when, when are we going to go back to work, when is this going to happen, you know, and my kid's going to get sick, that won't comfort you, but this will. Verse 2, he makes me, the, the, he, the scripture says, he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leaves me beside still waters, but I pray it this way, you make me lie down in green pastures, you lead me beside still waters. So let's talk about that first thing. You make me lie down in green pastures. So you know, they, people have studied sheep and they dis discovered that sheep are not very smart. They have discovered that sheep have almost no defenses against their predators and they don't know how to get from point A to point B. And we're kind of like that as Christians in our spiritual life. As sheep need a shepherd, you and I need Jesus, our great shepherd. To help us. What they found out about sheep is they won't lie down if they're afraid. So he says here, you make me lie down in green pastures. David being a shepherd understood this very well. The sheep won't lie down as long as they're afraid. And they won't lie down as long as they're hungry. So this is suggesting that these sheep are no longer afraid. And that they're no longer hungry. And they are in such good care, the shepherd is doing such good care for him. So just imagine, you make me lie down in green pastures. Okay, I'm lying down in that green pasture. I'm resting in God. I'm resting in Jesus. I'm not up frantic trying to get all this other stuff done. I'm resting in God for my hope. I'm resting in God for my deliverance. I'm resting in God that me and my family and the, all the people that come to Celebration Church and their family will be healthy and safe. I'm resting. See, I'm lying down in that green pasture. And can you? I'd like you to see that green pasture. I'd like you to see it. Here we are in Meadow Vista. Okay, I imagine it's a meadow that God is talking about here. We are lying in a meadow. Can you see it? It's a sunny day. There's maybe some few white clouds. You're surrounded by some mountains. And there's green grass everywhere and it's lush and there's flowers growing up wildflowers growing up in the grass and you're just laying there and you're just laying in the sun and it's just the perfect temperature and it's a perfect day that's what god wants you to see in this passage that's what he wants you to know he's bringing to you he wants you to be as like a sheep resting in a green pasture no worries see fear not no worries, you're resting in that green pasture. You've got everything you need. The green pasture would be for a sheep. Lots of good things to eat. You're not hungry. So this is this great thing. I want you to be able to see it in your head when you pray this. Oh Lord, I'm just just lying here. You know, I'm just you've caused me to be able to lie down in green pastures as it is this day, as it is this night in my life, with me and my family, my business. We're just like laying in a green pasture well taken care of and he says he leaves me beside still waters so still waters would be a place that sheep could drink and it wouldn't be a scary place it's not like I don't know if anyone's ever gone down the American River in the rapids you know that's not a that's a scary place it's so scary they they put a life jacket on you before they let you go down the river you know that's like telling you oh things are going to go bad here huh <laughs> But this is how God wants you to see it as a uh, still waters, restful waters, restoring waters. We go on to verse 3. 
He says, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Now, like a lot of guys in this part of the world, I like classic cars. I know a lot of you guys do. And I've restored some classic cars. And it's a long, expensive process. You buy the car, you think, oh, this is good. And then someone tells you, well, yeah, but it's got 10 things wrong with it. And you have to restore it. But once you restore it, it's beautiful. And people admire it. And so when I see he restores my soul, I'm just thinking how better than me, better than the greatest restoration of a vehicle, God has restored my soul and made it beautiful, made it wonderful. But um, let me tell you why this is so important for us. The Bible says when you become sexually intimate, can I talk about sex in church? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you become sexually intimate with someone, you become one flesh. And if you split from that person, there's a tearing of the soul. And that's what happens to us. You know, before I was saved, I wasn't, I was sex, drugs, and rock and roll before I got saved. So, tearing, tearing, tearing. And that's why divorce is, was one of the reasons why divorce is so terrible. Because there's a tearing of that soul. So here, Jesus has restored my soul. Praise God. My soul was in tatters. And probably your soul too. In tatters. Torn. Damaged. And Jesus comes right in and restores our soul. We can't see it, but it's a wonderful thing that happens. Now the word soul, he restores my soul, can also be translated body. So when I pray this, I, I pray this, Lord, you restore my soul, you restore my body, you restore my brain, you restore all the, the cells in my brain, all the cells in my body, you restore my kidneys, my heart, my lungs, anything I'm worried about, I'm telling the Lord, yes, thank you, you're restoring that. And I tell the Lord, you're restoring my income and my giving. You're restoring my courage. You're restoring my faith. You're, you're restoring my optimism, my confidence. You're restoring my marriage to Lisa. You're restoring my relationship to my staff. Isn't that a wonderful thing? To be praying that and to knowing that God is going to do all those things. He's a master restorer. And who doesn't need a little restoration once in a while? I know I do. And he goes on to say, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And here's, how I, here's what I tell the Lord when I pray this. I say, Lord, you lead me. That's our relationship. You lead me. I don't lead. You lead me. I don't want to lead. You lead me. That's who we are. That's our deal. You lead me. It's a good thing to remember that. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I'll say, you lead me in paths of righteousness, you lead me in paths of holiness, you lead me in paths of prosperity, you lead me in paths of victory. Oh, praise God. Praise God. We don't know how to get where God wants us to get, but He will lead us, if you let it. And that's why I say, Lord, I let you lead me. You lead me. I'm, I'm ready to follow you. For His name's sake. Do you know how powerful the name of Jesus is? For his name's sake. He's doing this because his name is so powerful. You know, Jesus was given a name. It says in Philippians 2, verse 9 and 10. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God by us. That for his name's sake, for that powerful name that nothing can stand against, that's out of that power he's leading me. And he will lead you. He'll lead all who trust him. And that's how I want you to pray it. Lord, thank you for leading me in all these ways. So now we're up to verse 4. And this verse is a little bit scarier. It says... Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, so let's talk about this, about this thing called death. 
You know, people are afraid of death. But you don't need to be if you love Jesus. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now I want you to understand this. Though I walk through, I'm walking through. I'm not stopping. I'm not camping out. I'm not going to get a motel room in the valley of death. I'm not going to build a house there or pitch a tent. I'm walking through. Can you see yourself walking through? Yeah. Not stopping. And it's the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. And let me ask you a question, my dear brothers and sisters. Can the shadow of a knife cut you? No. Can the shadow of a bullet hurt you? No. Neither can the shadow of death hurt you either. For Christians, for people who love Jesus, death is only a shadow. That's all it is. Now, if you're driving down the road, and you're, on, you're going this way, and there's a semi coming that way, if that semi goes by you, and the shadow of that semi goes over you, does that hurt you? No. It's just a shadow. Children, don't be afraid. It's just a shadow. So I, I don't want to say that to all Christians. My brothers, my sisters, my children, don't be afraid. It's only a shadow. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Praise God. I'm not afraid of death because it's only a shadow. And it says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Wow. You know, having someone with you is always good. But having someone super powerful and strong and all that is even better. Yes. You know, you can see a... The, the second grader was happy to walk to school with his sixth grade brother, because no one, or seventh grade brother, because no one at elementary school can mess with the seventh grader. <laughs> so I'm not afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your staff it comforts me. So let's talk about rod and staff. So a rod is a weapon the shepherd has to kill and fight off wolves. So your rod is. Jesus is offensive weapon against evil. And your staff is the thing with the crook on the end that Jesus can use to lift a sheep back on the right path. Gently. So your rod, your power, your strength, and your love, they comfort me. So that's how I pray it. Lord, I'm not afraid because you are with me and your rod and your staff comfort me. You know, I... When Jesus is with me, and he's always with me, and he'll never leave me or forsake me or leave or forsake you, it says in Hebrews, the person who's with you has all power in heaven and earth, Jesus said. The person who's walking with you has the keys of hell and death. The person who's walking with you has overcome all things, and no one can overcome him. Jesus has no rival. He has no equal. And if that's who's walking with us, why are we afraid? We shouldn't be. And then we get to verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So first I want you to notice in this verse, it says, you prepare a table before me. You're doing it, Lord. I'm resting in you. Yes. I'm not preparing that table. You know, remember Martha and Mary? Some of you guys know that story. Jesus came to visit Martha and Mary and Martha's all rushing around trying to prepare stuff. And Mary just sat at Jesus' feet and listened to him. And Martha said, Lord, don't you care that Mary's not helping me? And Jesus said, Martha, you're concerned with a lot of things, but Mary has chosen that good part that will not be taken from her. And this is what this is suggesting to me. We're going to sit at Jesus' feet while he prepares the table. He's preparing all this. And you know what kind of table it is? It's a king's victory table. That's yes. The translation is a king's victory table. Can you see that table? Can you see it piled with everything you need for you and your children and your friends and your family and your business? That table is piled with all the things God's preparing for those who love him. In the presence of my enemies? Seriously? Okay, so here's, here's the news. God is not shocked that we have trouble. God is not shocked that we have enemies. God is not shocked there's a virus out there. God's not uh, worried about it. He's handling it. Even in the presence of our enemies, God gives us victory. Even in the presence of our enemies, 
God gives us what we need. And so can you imagine our enemies sitting there going, dang, look at that. They're really making out. <laughs> what is it? They say that, uh, uh, what is it? Good, good life is the best revenge. I think it's something like that. And that's what our enemies are seeing as God helps us. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Okay, anoint my head with oil. You know what that means? It means he's crowning us. This is what they did in the Old Testament. The way they, they crowned a king or they chose a high priest and they would anoint their head with oil. So that's what's happening here. In fact, it says in Revelation 5.10, Jesus has made us kings and priests to God and we shall reign forever. Do you know that you've been anointed a king or a priest unto God? Can you, can you throw your shoulders back and say, you know, God's made me a king or a queen. God's made me a priest or a priestess. Praise God. That's so powerful. To know, you know, if you could just live in the reality that God has given you. If I could just do that. I mean, that, that's most of the battle is to remember what God said about me and about you and to live like that and to believe like that. All right, then we come to the last verse. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, what a wonderful end. Surely. You know what that means? Absolutely. Without question. No doubt in my mind at all. That your goodness, Lord, and your mercy will follow me. All the days of my life. And if they follow me all the days of my life, Lord, they're following me today. Amen. So I like to say, Lord, surely, without question, your goodness is following me this day. And follow could also be translated pursue. The goodness of God and the mercy of God is pursuing me and you. Isn't that great to know? I tell you what we are. We're magnets for the goodness and mercy of God. Amen. Just boom, calling it to us. The goodness of God is blessing, favor, prosperity, health. And the mercy of God, well, that's getting better than you deserve. And better than I deserve. So Lord, your goodness follows me. And I'm receiving better than I deserve. In Jesus' name. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now we've switched. We've transitioned out of this world into that next world. I'm glad he put it there. Because we always want to have our eyes a little bit on heaven. You know, one time I was sitting in my backyard... And we live near a lake, but I can't see the lake from my backyard. I was just sitting there in my backyard. And I said, wow, I wish I could see the lake. I wish I had a view of the lake. And you know, God spoke to my heart and said, don't worry about that. Make sure you have a view of heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we need a view of heaven. And that's, what he, that's how he ends here. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, in Luke 23... Jesus said something to the thief. The thief said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. It will be a forever place. How wonderful is that? The love of God. The love of God. You know, the other day I was, I was listening to this worship music and it occurred to me, I'm going to love Jesus forever. By his grace, by his grace, not by my might, but by his grace, He's put in me, Jesus has put in me, and I hope in you, a love for him. And just imagine forever with Jesus, loving him, seeing him, seeing the people that we love and lost who died in Christ. I mean, heaven's going to be a wonderful place. God has, you know, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things, the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love him. I just don't want to end my message without inviting you to receive Jesus Christ as Savior as well. And here's why it's important. All these wonderful things we talked about, all the protection of a Savior, of a shepherd, all the protection, all the walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that's all wonderful, but it's only available to you if you have Jesus as your Savior. If you've come to Christ and you've asked Him to forgive your sins, if you're washed away, but the sins you have have been washed away by the precious blood of Jesus, which he shed on the cross. 
So here's, here's what I want to do with you. I, I want to tell you, first of all, you know we, why we celebrate Easter? And we celebrate Easter because that's the day we celebrate Jesus rose from the dead. Now you may know all this and you may be saved. If, if you are, just bear with me because I, I don't want to take a chance that anyone listening is going to miss heaven. I just, just don't ever want to take a chance with people. So just give me a second, guys, if you already know this. But for those of you who don't, we celebrate Easter because we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive right now. And if he's alive right now, you can know it. So my question to you, if you've never done this, will you pray with me right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? We ask you again, will you pray with me right now to receive Jesus as your Savior? So I hope you say yes to that. So why don't you pray with me? We're just, both of us will close our eyes and you need to repeat after me. Whatever I say, you need to say. And say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. Wow. That, if you prayed that for the first time, I want you to know that your life has been dramatically rearranged and that your sins have been washed away by the blood of Christ, you can now call God your Father and you have an invitation to make heaven your home forever. There's nothing better than that. There's nothing that compares to receiving eternal life. You know, here's what Jesus said. He said that God so loved the world, loved the people of the world, loved you so much that he gave the most precious thing he had, his only son, that if you would believe in Jesus, you would not perish. Some will perish. But no one who believes in Jesus will ever perish. But instead you will receive the gift of everlasting life. The greatest gift God can give a human being. So I want you to be, I want to congratulate you if you prayed that for the first time. And if you did, I want you to contact Celebration Church and tell them. I want you to call them up and say, hey, I prayed with Mosley. And I received Christ as Savior. And they'll give you information if you need a free Bible, you can also call me. I'll send you a free Bible. My phone number is 916-444-4444. all four is a crazy number, but that's what it is. And uh, if you don't have a church, when we get back to going to church, you need to consider coming to Celebration Church in Meadow Vista. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Love you. Hope you have a great week.